Come unwrap some holiday magic this season in Denver, where the lights are brighter and the shopping is grander. The shows are more spectacular, the trees taller, the festivities merrier. So come for your holiday traditions or make some new ones with your friends and family in the Mile High City, where the season feels a whole lot more wonderful. Discover great hotels and more things to do at milehighholidays.com. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Stay tuned for Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall. The executioner waits. He waits, we are taught, for those who commit evil. He waits for them patiently, secure in the knowledge that they must come to him in the end. But this was true of a more orderly, organized era. Today, the executioner still waits, but not only for the criminal. Patiently, calmly, he waits for any of us, for all of us. He could be waiting for you. He could be waiting for me. But why? What have we done? Who knows? Today, there are executioners who have reasons of their own. Mr. Weller? Hey! How did you get in here? Are you Mr. Arnold Weller? Yeah, I'm Arnold Weller. Couldn't do for me to be mistaken. I've come here to present you with a gift. Yeah? The most precious thing in all this world is called justice. I have come to give you justice. Hey, put away that gun. Are you crazy? Justice, Mr. Arnold Weller. I give you justice. Hey. Our mystery drama... The Little Old Lady Killer was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Diane Baker and Ann Seymour. Some people die for serious reasons, and some people die for trivial reasons, and some people die for no reason at all. Tom Fessler is about to die in less than 10 minutes from now because he decided to stop at a roadside diner for a cup of coffee. Well, it's not so much the coffee. Perhaps Tom feels like bragging a bit to Sparky Wilson, who runs the place. This has been a day of days for Tom, a red-letter day. After all, it isn't every day that a man's efforts are crowned with success that a man can become the envy of all his friends. Tom wants to savor this day to its fullest. He wants it to last as long as possible. And so he turns off the highway and pulls into Sparky's parking lot, making sure the station wagon is parked just outside the front door where everybody inside can see it and marvel. But as Tom Fessler walks into Sparky's, he is immediately disappointed. The place is usually jammed with a hunting crowd, but tonight there isn't a soul, save Sparky himself and a gray-haired lady sitting at the counter. Evening, Tom. How's it coming, Spark? Can't complain. Who'd listen, anyhow? <laughs> Coffee? Yeah, cream and sugar. Anybody been around? In and gone. Anybody bag anything? Oh, they'd be uh, bragging if they had. <laughs> Well, Spark, take a look out the window. Yeah? See what I got on top of the wagon? Tom! Oh, yes, sir. That's, that's a ten-point buck. 
Oh, he must be. Boy, look at it. A buck that took the scale at 350. You're terribly proud of yourself, aren't you, mister? I beg your pardon, ma'am? What have you done, actually? You've transformed a magnificent animal into a mass of decaying carrion. Oh, well, look, ma'am, I don't ask what you do for pleasure. Pleasure? To butcher an innocent living creature. This is how you find pleasure. Look, I, I'm not bothering you. And I'm please. afraid you are. Your very presence, indeed, your very existence is an insult. Now, look, Mom, this is a public place. I'm sure it is, indeed. Much too public for my taste. How much do I owe you, sir? Tea and toast and tax. It's 37 cents, Mom. Please, be my guest. I'd rather not, thank you. There's a judgment and there is a judge. And you have been judged. Your eyes will beg for mercy as did the now sightless eyes of that poor beast. And the mercy you will receive is the mercy you have shown. None. Goodbye, man. The creepy old dame. <laughs> this one's nothing. You should see some of the others who come in here. This rolls off your back. Tell me, where'd you bag him? What do you use? I'll never believe it. My 30 caliber carbine. You're right. I'll never believe it. A 10 point? You can kill anything with a 30 if you hit him right. Yeah, that had to be a lucky shot. Why not? My lucky day. For stopping. Well, look who's here. Aren't you the lady that gave me that hard time back in the diner? My car, it, 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 it simply won't go. Well, ma'am, if you ain't too proud to accept the hand from a killer of innocent animals. My car, it, it just won't go. And, and I, I'm stuck in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Okay, ma'am, you just hold on. Let me get my flashlight and take a peek under the hood. Well, you're going to get something anyhow, ma'am. It's a good, clean sport. Okay. Now, let me check her out what's wrong. You won't get in there and tell me, listen? No. Just turn on. What do you mean, no? I don't want to turn on the ignition just yet. Why not? Turn around. Huh? That's a little pistol. Yes. I intend to kill you. You crazy? What do you want to kill me for? That poor animal last to the roof of your station wagon probably asked the same question. <laughs> yes. Pray. Oh, no, look. Probably need another shot. Did you use more than one? Yes, yeah, I. I told you they would beg for mercy. How large they are, how round, how bright. I told you. The mercy you will get will be the mercy you have given. Please, don't. Have you ever shown mercy? You're a doctor. Justice. Justice. Miss? Information. Information? Well, what do you want? I'm a police detective, uh, Mark Denzel. You? A detective? My name is Lieutenant Kramer. I'd like to ask you several questions. Yes, ma'am. Your name is Harold Wilson. You're known as Sparky? That's right, ma'am. Last night, a man was shot to death at the side of the road a mile and a half south of here. Yeah, yeah. It's a Tom Pressler. You knew him? Oh, we were old buddies. I guess I'm the last one who saw him alive. That is, aside from the killer. When did you see him? Well, he was in here. Uh, this is about 10.30. When he left here, was there anything unusual about his manner? No, he was laughing and joking. You know, he bagged himself a beer. And then... He was in this place at 10.30. Was anyone else around? No. You and Tom Fessler were alone? Yes, ma'am. All the time he was here? Well, yes, we were alone after she left. After who left? Oh, I don't know. Some dame. A dame? Yes, a crazy old dame. How old? Oh, she could have been 60. She could have been 70. How crazy? Oh, she had this thing against something. What thing? Well, Tom had the dead buck on top of the station wagon. She didn't go for that. No way. What, what do you mean? She said, oh, she said, you are going to be judged. Your eyes are bad for mercy. But you ain't gonna get none at all. Something like that. Can you describe this woman? Just an ordinary looking old dame with white hair. She was wearing? Uh, wearing, wearing. Uh, a little trench coat. And, and uh, what do you call them things that my, my wife wears? One. A, a, a kerchief. 
A kerchief around the red. Oh, what, what, what color was the trench coat? The trench coat color. Well, you know, we're, we're cocky. What color was the kerchief? Well, it was, um, it was blue. Yeah, kind of, kind of a bright blue. Yes. You've never seen her before? No, I tried to keep nuts out of here. I don't mean nuts exactly. I hunt starved to death. I mean, that kind of nuts that starts fights. You didn't say she started a fight. Well, she was going at it pretty good, you know. This and that and the other thing about butchering poor innocent animals. She walks out of here mad. How mad? Well, mad enough to kill somebody. Except she wouldn't do it. Why do you why do you say that? Well, how could she? She's so dead set against killing. We know it was a woman inspector. Look, Louise, just because Pepper had a few words with an old dame back in a diner. Well, put the old lady aside for a moment. Look at the rest of it. It's late at night. He's got this dead animal on the roof of his car. Suddenly he stops. Why? You can see he was speeding by the skid marks. He pulls over to the shoulder. You can see the tire treads clearly in the dirt. And there was another car there, too, parked and waiting. How can you tell? They were tire marks. You can see what happened. A woman flagged him down. Why do you insist there was a woman? Well, he wouldn't have stopped for anyone else, given the lateness of the hour and his rush to get home. So, it's a woman in trouble. What kind of trouble? Car trouble. Well, that's good theorizing, Louise, but you need something solid or specific to support it. But I do have something solid, and it's in the report. What? Found at the scene. A flashlight with Fessler's name stamped on it. But that flashlight doesn't necessarily prove... Picture it, Inspector. A woman flags him down. She says she has car trouble. The normal thing for him to do is to take the flashlight so that he can look for well, it. From what we know about Fessler, he was a big-hearted guy. He might have also stopped to help out a man. The gun. What about the gun? A twenty-two caliber. It's not a man's gun. Oh, now, Louise, I know of guys who committed murder with those little pistols. But your average killer, who's a man, likes a good-sized weapon. It's all part of his psychosis. Now, go back to my little old lady in the diner. Yeah? She's basically afraid of guns, so she uses the smallest one possible. Why does it have to be your little old lady? Suppose she was young, good-looking. He fixes her car and says to her, Now, wouldn't you like to thank me? He forces her to thank him. With a couple of twenty-two caliber bullets. Yeah. But your young lady doesn't exist. My old lady was in the diner. She goes around passing judgment. She loves animals. She hates hunters. She goes down the road a mile or so, pulls over, waits, and flags him down. How are we going to find an old lady in a khaki trench coat and a blue kerchief? Inspector, I'm afraid we haven't heard the last of her. credit. He's the kind of chump we're looking for. But you gotta let him win a couple of hands. One or two big pots, then he's hooked. I'll be out in a little bit. Sure. Good evening, Mr. Weller. Yeah. Huh? Mr. Arnold Weller? How'd you get in here? We have some business to discuss. Look, lady, I don't know how you got in, but before I throw you out, let me wise you up. Hundreds of old dames like you come around beefing because her husband's lost money gambling in my joint. But it's legal. The place is legal. I, I, I got a license. My husband never gambles. Neither do I. Well, what do you want? What's your name? My name is Bernadette Cobb. This is J. Martin Cobb. My consuming interest... Look, lady, I don't have time. You have time. You have all of eternity. Now, look, I don't want to be impolite, but be that. Certainly. After I attend to my business. In my purse, I have a... Um... <laughs> There it is. Hey, put that thing down. What are you pointing that gun at me for? I intend to kill you. Look, all, all I do is run a joint. People come here to gamble. I don't force nobody. I don't care about this place, Mr. Weller. Well, well, what place are you talking about? I don't own any... any uh... The other place, Mr. Weller. The other place. What other place? Look, you got it all wrong. The other place. The other barbaric, sadistic fiendish, infernal place. No, don't. Please. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some dough. And I'll give you justice. <laughs> justice. 
Justice, says the lady. Well, obviously we have here a freelance dispenser of justice. Mrs. Martin J. Cobb. Justice and humanity. She certainly seems to have the purest of motives, but somehow, like so many dedicated reformers, it all comes down to the same thing in the end. Murder. Evidently, Mrs. Cobb agrees with the poet who in describing nature depicted it as a place where every prospect pleases and only man is vile. Well, we may consider Mrs. Cobb an extremist in her attitude towards animals, but let us be fair. Animals in general have not been getting a good deal from us members of the human race overall. And so even if they have found a somewhat over-enthusiastic partisan, it still isn't going to seriously change the basic balance of things. Well, what with Mrs. Cobb as the killer and Lieutenant Louise Kramer as the detective, it appears to be Ladies' Day on our little show. The ladies will present us with more check and mate when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. Wasn't it one of our outstanding men of letters, Mr. Henry David Thoreau, who said, if a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it's because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music he hears. Well, now, this is one of those philosophical gems which sounds fine on paper. It may be all right to listen, but to march is something else. Mrs. J. Martin Cobb has been marching to the beat of her own drummer lately, and so far, she has killed two people. Because by this time, you have become a fine, highly perceptive, experienced, and discerning audience, you know that we shall hear her deadly little twenty-two caliber pistol bark again. Oh, Martin, Martin, what color you give those strings? Darling, I was merely one of the players in the violin section. Is there anything new in the newspaper, my dear? Nothing new. The same murder, robbery, assault. The same saber rattling, threats and squabbling. Changed only are the names of the people in the nation. Is there anything of uh, um, purely local interest, Martin? Well, if murder is interesting, we seem to have a minor crime wave. Indeed. You recall a... Hunter was shot to death last week. I consider that supreme and sublime justice, a hunter. Now, now, you must not take on so at the mere mention of the word hunter. Well, for the stupidity and arrogance and carelessness of a depraved hunter, you would not be condemned to spend the rest of your life in a wheelchair. Darling, the man meant no harm. I should have known better than to stroll through the woods during the height of the deer. That's what I mean, Martin. You had no right to stroll peacefully, but he had the right to stalk and kill. At any rate, the same person who killed the hunter killed a rather unsavory individual named Arnold Weller. How do the police know that? They have scientific tests of one sort or another which reveal that the bullets were fired from the same gun. And do the police have any idea as to who the murderer might be? According to the newspaper, they're following certain significant leads, which is another way of saying that they're completely in the dark. These two victims of, of no great loss to civilized society. Well, the hunter wasn't a bad fellow, according to the press. Are really depraved. You should have seen that poor dead beast slung across the top of his car. Darling, you talk as if you actually had seen it. Well, I, I, I read the description and, well, my, my vivid imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, the latest one, uh, he was a professional gambler. He operated a rather questionable establishment. He also did other things. What do you mean? Well, I, 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 I assume he did other things. My dear, you become much too emotional about these sensational crimes. I don't think we'd better even discuss them anymore. They're too traumatic for a person of your delicate nature. Well, Louise, how do you square your little old lady with Arnold Weller? Inspector, there has to be a connection. Show me. Your own reports, you can't find any link between Fessler and Weller. You can't even find any evidence that Arnold Weller ever hunted. I'm convinced that my old lady killed Tom Fessler. 
But with Arnold Weller, your cruelty to animals premise goes out the window. And without that, you don't even have the little old lady. I know why she could have killed Fessler. I agree, but why should she kill Arnold Weller? He didn't hunt or fish. He never even owned a cat or dog. He was never involved with animals in any way, shape, or form. That we know of, Inspector Farley. That we know of. Well, if we'd like to light your detective. How's the crime business these days? You knew Tom Fessler. Oh, yes, ma'am. Did you also know a man named Arnold Weller? Arnold Weller? He was shot to death the other day. Oh, yes, I think I read about it. You didn't know him? Uh, no. No, definitely, or no, after a pause for thought? Well, you know how it is. I'm just trying to give a straight story to a cop. You saying you didn't know Arnold Weller? Well, yes, I, I knew of him. I, I knew enough to make me want to wring his neck. Is that a fact? Yes, Mum. Maybe I shouldn't say that to a cop who's investigating his murder, but... Uh... But what? Oh, he had a little accent going there. I just couldn't see it all. He used to run dog fights. Dog fights? Oh, it's against the law, but who am I to tell you? But he used to stage those things. Dog fights? I don't mind cock fights. I even go, and I bet. But they're nothing. <laughs> Just chickens. And we eat chickens, don't we? The dogs. The trained dogs to tear each other up. Dogs. How can any human being be so cruel to a dog? And he would stage dog fights? Oh, he had this big barn not far from the intersection, eight off the turnpike. Now, I'm surprised the cops never tumbled. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. Well, I don't know what for, Lieutenant, but you're welcome. Inspector, my old lady is right back in. The cruelty to animals angle is back in. She killed him because he ran dog fights? That's right, Inspector. I don't know, Louise. You can take a premise and run it halfway to the moon. What else have we got? <sighs> Nothing. I realize it's embarrassing. What's embarrassing? The fact that such an illegal activity was flourishing within the city limits. Well, it's not embarrassing to me. Let the uniform guys worry. Well, how about the little old lady now? Do you realize how many white-haired old ladies there can be who wear trench coats and blue kerchiefs? And carry twenty-two caliber pistols? What's well, suppose she isn't carrying it at that time? Thin lips, too. All right, Louise. It'll go out to every station house in the city. Benedette? Yes. Yes, I'm home. I'm furious. But why, my dear? Oh, I don't know if I can talk about it now. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Sure. No, no, it was too terrible. Now perhaps if you told me. No, no. I mustn't. My darling, when you share a load with someone, it's only half as heavy to carry. No. There's no point in making you as furious as I am. Darling, perhaps a nice hot cup of tea. Usually in those matters, I, I, I have been prepared to act almost on the spot. But this time, I lack the proper... Yes? The proper what? My dear, you two talk in riddles, you know. Her day of reckoning is soon to be upon her. Day of reckoning? My dear, you two say the strangest thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have upset you, Martin. Staunton Road. Nice, quiet, deserted. 427, 425, and this should be 423. The name in the mailbox is Harris. Right. And we shall go around the back way, somewhere to the back door, and... Aha! There's the dear girl hanging up the clothes. Mrs. Harris. She doesn't hear me. Wait. It's better that she doesn't hear me. Because if she heard me, she'd turn down her transistor radio. And in that case, 
way someone might quite possibly hear the shot. No, this way. I am hidden by the trees in her yard, and the shot will be masked by the sound of the music. So, Mrs. Harris, Mabel Harris, I say to you, your old lady. Who is she, Inspector? If she's your old lady, her name is Mrs. J. Martin Cobb. Who found her? A very smart young rookie cop. He saw this old lady going into an apartment house on his beat. He stared at her because she was wearing a blue kerchief and a khaki trench coat, see? All right. It seemed to him she was uncomfortable just because he was looking at her. I understand. It's that extra sense every good cop develops, but he must have been born with it. Well, he remembered. He'd seen her come in and out of the house, dressed just that way. But the next time he saw her, after he gave her the once-over, she dressed differently. How differently? Blue coat instead of a trench coat. And no more kerchief. And she even had a different hair color. It's if she's on to something. Ooh, let me get Sparky Wilson. Do you want to be in on this, Inspector? Something tells me I'd better. You're giving us your time, Mr. Wilson. Well, look, if it helps us back, tell me fastless killer you can have all day. I look through the windshield. Look at the people coming toward you. And if any of them reminds you of anyone you've ever seen before... Well, this guy coming along here, he reminds me of a guy I was in the army with. Mm -hmm. But it's different. And that young time, <laughs> Lord Lungy, I used to run around with a chick like that. Uh -huh. Oh, look, how can this be else? Uh, just keep it up. Then, uh, then all the time, uh, he's turning into the apartment house. She reminds me. Uh, yes? Where have I seen her before? Have you seen her before? That's her. The old woman who was in my diner the night Tom Fessler was killed. The one who threatened him with retribution? She's got different air, but I'd never forget that face. Well, Inspector? Well, what, Louise? Do I pick her up? I suppose she doesn't have the gun. You realize the only thing that can hang her is a twenty-two caliber, nothing else. Suppose I arrest her right now. Suppose she isn't carrying the gun. No, the only thing we can do is put a tail on her, have her shadowed night and day, and wait until she wants to use that pistol again. But if we delay, it could be too late. And if we move now, it could be too early. Timing, as most people would agree, can be the most important thing in life, and in death, too. For all of Lieutenant Kramer's insight, and for all of Inspector Farley's experience, these two, unfortunately, don't know what we know. As it happens, when she turned into the apartment house just 30 seconds ago, Bernadette Cobb did have the deadly little 22 caliber pistol in her bag because she had just returned home from a fresh murder, the murder of a Mrs. Harris. And uh, who is Mrs. Harris? A seemingly inoffensive suburban housewife who was, as we saw, obviously minding her own business while she was hanging her clothes on the line. It seems that all occupations are becoming more and more hazardous, especially with Mrs. Cobb on the loose. More hazards in Act 3 when I return. In Cracking a murder case can be like splitting a diamond. When the diamond is struck perfectly, it breaks into a number of smaller precious stones. But let the wrong force be employed in the wrong direction and one runs the risk of reducing a precious stone to dust. And just as a jewel can be lost, so can one lose the opportunity to catch a murderer forever. Precision. That's a key word for diamond cutters and detectives alike. Diamond cutters and detectives. How similar their professions can be. Each has at his fingertips a wealth of scientific guidance. And yet, when the time comes to strike the crucial blow, 
success or failure depends on pure instinct. What's the woman's name, Inspector? Mrs. Mabel Harris. She was killed this morning. And it becomes our party because the lab reports the bullet was fired from the same twenty-two caliber. Okay. A woman named Mabel Harris. Killed this morning. At noon, we were staking out the little old lady's doorway. Along comes our little old lady. Now, just a minute, please. She was probably coming back from her latest killing. She probably had the gun in her purse. Louise, you can't get carried away. Okay, look, we made the decision not to take her. Yeah. Now, I could have been wrong to want to risk letting her escape forever by trying to take her right there. But I went along with you then. Now, don't you back down on me now. Who's backing down? The little old lady theory of approach, whatever, rests on one fundamental premise. She's out to punish people who were cruel to animals. Now we have a dame named Mabel Harris, dead. If you can't find me a cruelty to animal angle there, your little old lady is out the window. I know I'll find that angle. What makes you so sure? Because it has to be there. Yes, Martin, my dear. Is everything all right? Of course, of course. Are you sure? My darling, why do you ask? Because you seem so... so out of sorts lately. Oh? Do I? For one thing, you insist on wearing that... that ridiculous red wig. Is it ridiculous, Martin? Mm, My darling, your own hair is so soft and silky. Why would you even think of hiding it? Because, darling, there may be danger. Danger? From who? Oh, my dear Martin, you've been away from the world so long, confined here the way you are. You don't know what it's like on the streets anymore. Bernadette, what's troubling you? What's really troubling you? I feel that people are looking for me. Looking for you? I feel their eyes seeking me out. Searching for me. Dear, dear, dear. You've been working so hard to support both of us. You're just exhausted. Physically and emotionally. Now, sit beside me. Yeah. Rest. Relax. Close your eyes. You'll feel better. Yes, my darling. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Mr. Harris, did your wife have any enemies that you knew of? Enemies? Mabel with enemies? Everybody loved Mabel. A woman, kind, loving, generous woman, hanging up her clothes in her own backyard. Some depraved, subhuman beast. Just answer one question. How did your wife feel about animals? Inspector, is this woman for real? How can anybody in their right mind ask a question like that at a time like this? Do you suppose you could answer it? Mabel loved them. A stray dog couldn't walk down the street, but she'd give him something to eat. What do you mean by that question? She made a mistake. One very, very unfortunate mistake. But it was an honest mistake. You don't know how sick that mistake made her. What mistake? Well, that's why when this lieutenant asked the question about animals, it was as if she was trying to make poor Mabel be some kind of a, a monster. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan? Her, uh, her big Doberman pincher. He was big, mean-looking, and that's why she called him Genghis Khan. But he was really very gentle. Yeah? Yeah, he'd been sort of out of sorts. A couple of days ago, she thought she might drop by the vet. Well, she had some shopping to do first, and so she stopped off at the supermarket. Yeah, yeah. And she parked in a lot. You know, the heat wave we've been having? Well, they got this law about how you can't bring dogs into the supermarkets, you know? Yeah, I know. So she left him. She she had to leave him in the car. Well, she never does this. I mean, she's always sure to leave one window open. But that day, she just wasn't thinking, maybe being sick and all. Jengis was so quiet she may have forgotten he was inside. But she closed all the windows. Oh. And she ran into some people. She knew and you know how women are. They can gab about nothing for hours. It was a terrible hot day and the sun boiled down the inside of the car and after a while there was a commotion out on the lot. Some people must have noticed and his dog just lying on the seat. He was a big dog. Yeah, go on, Mr. Harris. He... 
He was dead. And people were angry. And they were saying, find the owner of that dog and that person should be arrested. And Mabel, she remembered, she told me there was one old lady there who was shouting, the person who owns that dog should be shot. A little old lady. <laughs> What are you doing here, Louise? Waiting for her, Inspector. You don't have to. we got it staked out all around the clock. Collins and O'Neill are on watch now. I want her, and I'm not taking any chances. Louise, you're a lieutenant. This isn't your kind of work. Look, I'm on my own time, Inspector. Yeah. Well, sooner or later she has to try to make another move, and then we got her. We've been waiting for two weeks. We'll wait for two months. More if we have to. I wonder. What? Well, I better not tell you. You better not tell me why. Well, maybe we can help her move. Oh. Well, I'll do it on my time off, and then you won't be able to turn me down. Oh. Come on. Darling, you're so nervous. That was one of the few plates we have left from our wedding. You remember my sister, Martha, the yes, darling, this I remember. No. Oh, My darling, the ultimate fate of any dish is to be broken one day. Now tell me, why are you so nervous? What's upsetting you? Darling, I, I, I'm very much concerned. Oh, no, Martin. We can't afford to have you... Please, listen, dear. I was looking in the desk drawer a few days ago. Martin, that's my desk. I didn't mean to pry, but Martha had called and asked for Millicent's address, and I thought you kept your little book there. Bernadette, why do you have a pistol? Oh, darling, the world has become so dangerous. Thieves, bandits, burglars. But the only function of a pistol is to kill somebody. You don't know what the world has become. We must be able to protect ourselves. To kill is a sin. Martin, I know the kind of world you want, and we shall have it. Certain people must be taken care of first. What are you talking about? Nothing, nothing. Now, please, you must get rid of the pistol. Why? I'm afraid. There are times when you show so much anger, I, I don't think it's wise for you to have a gun. But Martin, don't be silly. I, I couldn't kill anyone. What, this gun, it, it, it's just to scare people with. I'd feel better if you'd let me make sure about that. What did you say, Martin? What do you mean? Make sure of it. Nothing. Nothing at all. Sometimes I just talk aimlessly. Forget it. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, would you know the price of this cocoa? It's marked on the side. Oh, of course. Here it is. It's so strange. Strange? Strange to be paying anything at all for cocoa. I was just down in South America where it uh, kind of grows wild, you know. Uh, that, that's where I shot this uh, cavarina. This what? Uh, this cavarina. A very rare species of ocelot. Yes. I've noticed you wearing that scarf. Fantastic fur. Thin enough to wear on a cool summer day and warm enough even for the coldest winter. Yes. And such terrific hunting. I have to get down there again soon. The Caverina is practically extinct. And I want to make sure I get my share. Proud of yourself, aren't you? Well, I don't like to brag, but I'm a great shot. I blasted that cat right between the eyes. A living, breathing animal. A sacred creation must give up its life. A cruel sacrifice to your vanity. Excuse me. Thank you for helping. There is a judgment, and there is a judge. And you have been judged. Uh... Goodbye. And found guilty. This is Lieutenant Kramer. Any messages? Call Inspector Farley, urgent. Thank you. Don't touch that phone, please. <gasps> How did you... Put it down. That's it. Now, don't move. You can't get away with this. I'm not getting away with anything. I'm not committing a crime. You're pointing a gun at me. Obviously, you intend to kill me. That's a crime. No. I'm ridding the world of those people who make the world an abomination. A murderer. But you are also a murderer. Clever talk and twisted logic cannot save you. Nothing can save you. Just as you shot that poor, beautiful animal, I shall shoot you. 
strange. You are also a poor, beautiful animal. And I shall now administer justice. Justice. accounts with him one day. Eventually, I think she forgave Martin. As you might suspect, the little old lady killer has been committed to an institution. And since Martin would be all alone in the world, he lives there too and helps take care of her. However, it's Hard to say. She could be biding her time and awaiting her opportunity, as are so many other people, all of whom are certainly acting from the purest of motives. What a world it used to be that only demons and devils and the blackest hearted villains were the killers. Ah, what do you know? It seems that some very fine people are moving into it also. And so, if you should be rudely snuffed out, the chances are that you might have been murdered by a very nice person. I shall return shortly. The moral of our story? Well, we have several. But the one that would appear to be the most obvious is, as a philosopher once said, all extremes meet in eternity. Super kindness is the other face of super cruelty. Obsessive love is the other side of super hate. And isn't it strange sometimes that so many people who so strongly protest cruelty to animals tend to overlook cruelty to one of the most prevalent animals on this globe, Homo sapiens. Well, why not? After all, since when was consistency one of mankind's most deeply ingrained virtues? Never. Consistency is supposed to be the hobgoblin of little minds. Therefore, all of you, the only consistency that has any real value is the consistency of listening to our broadcasts here seven times each week. Our cast included Diane Baker, Ann Seymour, Alan Reed, and Marvin Miller, and Barry Kroger. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I'm not a person. I'm a commodity. Oh, why can't you all just leave me alone? To be what? To be a... I, I, I don't know what... I never even seem to have a chance to find out for myself. To be Marcy Gerstenberg, first off, After I guess... After the picture, Marcy Gerstenberg will no longer exist. There will only be Marcy Herrick. And if I don't want to be Marcy Herrick... Pretty hard to escape. There's also one contract I don't think you could break. What? An unwritten one. For the very sick lady... In the hospital. Hmm. Your mother, who's going to have open heart surgery. 
Very expensive oh, surgery. No, no, no. Don't. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.